over the years, smartphone cameras have evolved and gotten better. And our favorite smartphone manufacturers are doing their very possible best to fit in more features into that small lens you have on the back of your phone. But then it gets to a point where you can't add extra features because the size will be limiting you. And that's where we ushered into the era of multi-camera phones. So you see some phones with three cameras, some phones with four cameras, some phones with six cameras, right? So today I'm going to talk about some of the uses of these extra cameras, how to utilize them and make your photos look air. Uh, so I'm Michelle Manuel and welcome to Tech Haven. So like this thing over here. All right, so the first sensor or the primary sensor we have on everybody's own is the wide angle RGB, what I prefer to call it. So most of the phones do with just this camera. A lot of phones, all the phones that come with just one camera do with this camera. So it's called a wide angle lens because if you realize, if you look through your phone when you come to take a picture, it's quite wide. It's not too wide, but then it's quite wide from your normal view. So that's why we call it a wide angle lens. And it also takes care of color and then light and other stuff so it's your primary sensor that's the main sensor that captures all the information so the next lens i want to talk about is the telephoto lens so this gives you the ability to zoom in without any noticeable loss in quality so previously your old sensors or the phones that have only one sensor what they do if you zoom in is that it just crops into the picture so if you have maybe 20 megapixels and you try and zoom in it just crops so it will get into maybe like 80 megapixels or 50 megapixels but then with a telephoto sensor, the focal length is arranged in such a way that you can go and learn high school physics again, you remember. But then they use, make use of focal length so that they can be able to zoom into the image without getting any loss in the quality of the image. So that's how the telephoto sensor works. And one very important feature it's used for is portrait mode. Now, this is our favorite in this day and age, but then I'll explain how it works later in the video. One disadvantage of telephoto sensor is that it makes the phone camera bump thicker. So if you realize all the iPhones have a thick camera bump, the camera protrudes out of the back. It's not their fault, they're trying to put in a telephoto sensor. So it's because of the way I arrange the sensors, it makes it quite thick and difficult to make it thin. You understand? So that's one disadvantage of telephoto sensor. But then I mean I don't mind having a thick camera bump that can give me good portrait mode. So no problem. So the third camera I want to talk about is the monochrome sensor. The monochrome sensor helps in capturing more detail. So your primary sensor, which I mentioned first, is taking care of light and color and a whole lot. So in taking care of all this, processing the image, you might lose some detail inside the image. But the monochrome sensor is just taking care of the details in the image. It's being shot in black and white, as the name suggests, monochrome. So using the monochrome sensor will let you capture more details. So what they do is that they capture the two images with the primary sensor and then the monochrome sensor. They merge it together so you can get the details better from the black and white. Then you get the color information and the light processing from the main sensor. They combine them and you get a very detailed image. Comparing these two images, you realize that the one on the left is more detailed than the one on the right. This is because of the monochrome sensor that's been attached. This photo was shot on the Huawei P10 Pro, which is has a monochrome sensor in addition to the RGB sensor or the main sensor. The fourth camera I want to talk about is the cameras with the ultra wide lens. Now, in this current day and age, too, it's getting very popular. People are demanding for it so much so that the next iPhone is rumored to have a third sensor. So you don't have your regular two sensors to come with a third sensor. So what does the ultra wide do? I mentioned that the first one is also called wide, but then you can get some extra wide shots to get more into the shot. What I mean by that is that, for instance, if you are taking a building shot, you are taking a shot of a building, and you want to capture the whole building in the frame, you realize that you have to move back some before you can get the building into the frame. You understand what I'm saying? So to get more of the image or more of the scene into your picture without going back, or using panorama the wide angle lens come in handy it can let you get some very dramatic and very cool shots that you can use to show on social media and stuff the one problem with the ultra wide is that it creates a sort of distortion because it, the lens is kind of concave so it creates 
the distortion around the side so if you look at this image realize that around the bottom and the side is kind of getting circular getting distorted but then they, they are able to fix this with image correction and stuff so it's getting better over the years but that's just one problem but then still people love it because it gives them dramatic shots so the wide angle lens is good but the best implementation of the wide angle lens is what is used in the pixel 3 and the pixel 3 xl oh wait one sec oh. all right three two one smile as you saw from the video when it's time to take a selfie that's when you actually need a wide angle because especially when it's with a group of people because you want a lot of people inside the shot so i think for me personally the best implementation of a wide angle lens should be on the front of the camera not the back fine the back can get help you get some dramatic shots but for the front i think it's a must almost every phone should have a wide angle lens in the front to help taking selfies or what they call groupies with a lot of people now the fourth sensor is called the depth sensor or how some people call it the depth sensor how i call it so as the name implies it's used to get the distance between the image of the phone sensor and the subject that is being shot so what this will help with is portrait mode so you'll be able to isolate the things that are close to the camera and the things that are extremely far away from the camera so that i can get the blur effect or what's called the bokeh so that i can be able to get clearer shots and stuff so guys i hope i helped you some way somehow somewhere somewhat in a way to use your phone senses so some phones come with what four senses but then it doesn't really produce good images some of the phones i showed earlier they have six they still don't produce the best image because it's not only the number of lenses or the the versatility in the lenses that will give you a better image the processing of the image the way the image looks the color the detail all these things come into play so the fact that your phone has more lenses and sensors doesn't mean that to give you a better image so guys if you like this video share subscribe like if you have any questions put in the comment section below but please make sure you subscribe a lot of people watch you don't subscribe i don't get it if you like the video subscribe so that when a new video comes out you'll be able to get it once again i'm michelle manuel this is tech haven and see you next time bye bye